Hello, Jos. Hi, Divya. Good morning. How are you? Good. How are you? Doing well. Busy. Extremely busy. Same here. With yeah. the party Airtel demo coming and uh, unfortunately nice. we lost the lab access, HP lab access. Huh. Uh, because nobody is there, I'm just saying that. Uh, our yeah. after before move, I used to you know even I shown couple of times uh, delete the demo and all how the resources come and all, but mm. suddenly after the move, our uh, something is changed. I could not get access. I am back and forth communicating with David King and all. They That's also it. don't know and they don't uh, have uh, you know. So today okay. I'm, I told yeah. him personal. Yeah. Oh. Okay, oh, this is just me too. Okay, okay. yeah, yeah. Let, let's chat offline. Yeah. Yeah. Just to make sure you never know. Yeah, yeah. Just to be safe. Yeah. Hi, Jules. Hello, hey. Mutu. So this is Odin call, right? Yeah, Odin forum. Yeah, I got confused whether it's AMA call because only three of us. Hey, Jonas. Uh, Jonas is joining. Hello, guys. Hello, hey, Jonas. Jonas. I just got a message from Bob. He's not joining today. Uh, right. So hopefully, he's choosing to join. Because my, my problem is when I talk and it's hard to take notes. Uh, let's see here. Hello, Thomas. Hi. Joe's, can you hear me or am I? We can hear you, but you're rather pale today. Sorry. You can... <laughs> yeah, we can hear you, Jonas. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Let's see what we have. I had a few things. I think we'll wait for some more people to join, but I, we, we had a good discussion about, uh, uh, you know, where the composition service belong and also how we need to integrate it if we need to. And I, I wrote up some conclusions in the minutes. I, I'm not sure you all agree, but if you don't, please add your own stuff in there. But I guess so that, that's something we can continue that discussion. The other thing I wanted to bring up is potential collaboration around creating some Dell server plugin. I, I know Dell has not decided to join, but it's we can create some something based off the generic Redfish plugin that we have, so you can do at least uh, some uh, base type of management of, of of Dell servers. It's I mean it's open there, the APIs and everything, so it should be doable. And then finally, just a conclusion on the white paper that Martin sent out. We haven't, he hasn't re received a lot of response to that. So I don't know if that means that you're all good with it. it. It has to do with networking and DMTF fabrics, or if you need more time. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, just looking at if somebody added something more here. Uh, some update on Intel contribution that we have there as well. Good. Jonas, we should talk about one more thing. It occurs to me that we we kind of need to maybe close on this, um, and that is the release schedule. Yeah, very good. Let me add that. Actually, that's a kind of an important one. Should yes. I Should we start with that, do you think, Alex? I think we can time box the discussion, but I think we do need to arrive at uh, a release plan fairly quickly because um, that would certainly be helpful, right? In terms of recruiting and other things. I'm adding that I, I, I'm not sharing your opinion about that. We can, we have the ability to time box. I'm basing that on, <laughs> on my experience, but <laughs> so I'm adding the release schedule here. Uh, as the first bullet. And I think it's a matter of trying to figure out when we want to have the first release, as well as 
how many releases a year and, and these type of things, right? Yes. Yes. Uh, okay. So any thoughts there? Uh, Alex, you brought it up. What, what are you thinking about? Release? Well, I think we basically committed uh, since we started the community in, in July, July 15th, I believe. I think we actually have said that we would release the release zero, whichever the first one is, um, before the end of the year. And so the question becomes, if we for now go with a quarterly cadence, just to kind of keep things moving, you know, it took us a little while to kind of form and norm and like do all this stuff. Is it possible to do a formal release one uh, before the end of the year and then go to a quarterly cadence afterwards and, you know, make sure that we have something new and, uh, and, 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 you know, important in each one. Uh yeah, I think I think um, I I won't say that that's possible, and we certainly have the ability to we have we I, I would say we have uh, code that we can release. The, the question I have though is because uh, once you get into November, all companies seems to be very become very busy, and then you have the some companies shut down over the holidays. <laughs> So that's why I'm feeling it, it might be a little tight. Um, yeah, and that's why I'm asking the question, right? Can we, right? Uh, because yeah. uh, alternatively, we can do something in January. But just keep in mind that typically open source communities have a tendency to release sooner rather than later, right? And so, you know, some, some people might say, well, what's going on? There is no, there's no uh, releases coming. So what are they doing? Yeah. So I, again, you know, we can't uh, deny the fact that there will be company shutdowns and holidays and whatnot. But uh, I guess my question really is like, given what we have today, uh, plus the, you know, Raffle is here, I think, right? Yeah. So he'll give an update on some of our contributions, but maybe maybe working on uh, maybe taking the, the the seed code plus the update service for example mm -hmm. would be a sufficient starting point to say look we've we've added one more redfish service we are now going to release the first release yeah so <clears throat> that and potentially depending on what rafael's update is uh, the plugin for unmanaged racks yeah but, um can we first focus on just trying to figure out what what are the requirements for a release? What yeah. do we, uh, as far as we need to clear some tests and, and we also need to have some documentation, I guess. Well, you know, conceivably you would have, I mean, it doesn't even have to have anything other than the seed code, but you know, what we're basically saying is that we have the basic dev environment set up in place so we have a way of we have a way of adding new features we have some testing that gets done by the community to to ensure that these features are compliant with whatever you know conventions we want to establish and then um and then you know uh, we just started you know again the first release is always ugly right you know nobody has high expectations for the first release it's more just yeah. establishing legitimacy first and then you know subsequent releases get better and better and better usually by the yeah. five you you're good to go right so so anyway um we could have a release train on quarterly basis and we could start with just the seed code plus you know all the um all the logistics around how we how we handle development how we handle you know validation that you know the release is not going to be broken you know all of that stuff right that could be our first kind of deliverable second deliverable could be um the bmc emulator let's say which could be done asynchronously from um or maybe not, I don't know, right? My point is that two ways we can go here, right? One would be a release train, 
um, where we have it on a quarterly basis. The other way is just continuous integration, continuous delivery, where we just, you know, as features get baked in, they get put into into the into the GitHub and in, in the golden repo, right? So that we have we 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 know that this release is cooked, right? And we can apply whatever criteria we want to making it cooked. I I and there there might be a lot of viewpoints here, so I'll just yeah. put mine out there. I I think I think if we can have a release uh, branch, and 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 we we we. Uh, sort of merge that into the main branch and then the the goal the goal the, the the branch that is always cooked is going to be the development branch where we always have to clear CICD you know all that before anything goes in there but if somebody just doing clone on the main branch they should be getting the late, latest release is is what I feel but I, I know there are different viewpoints I even in, inside HP I had a lot of discussions <laughs> So. Yeah, I guess, you know, most projects have these, you know, periodic releases that they claim add incremental value to what's there. And we have a whole bunch of features in the pipeline that we can then start scheduling if we know which train they're going to be leaving on. For example, the AMI contribution may not be ready in time for this first release, but they may be ready for the second or third the uh, the unmanaged rack service could be ready for the second release you know maybe maybe there are other things we can do and add to the first one right again like i said first one is like a dry run in a way but you know to me it would be interesting to to you know i you know what 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 do others think about the cadence yeah so we we assume a release train with some cadence what, what do you guys think? Any any viewpoints? I agree with you. Uh, a quarterly release is is a good approach, I think, Alex. But yeah, that's my viewpoint. Anybody else? My viewpoint, which is uh, actually compliant with Alex's uh, other open source project that Intel is involved in, these are typically quarterly. Yep. Thanks, Rafael. Uh, um, so we oh, I, we obviously have Louise here as well. Louise, if you want to just give input from other projects, that that would be appreciated. Anybody else has some viewpoints here as far as uh, having these fixed releases four times a year? Well, or, I, I, or I think the thing, yeah, a slightly um, parallel thing with this is that by having these fixed releases it gives you the opportunity to put you know make a little bit of a splash about you know yes the release and, and the features that you have whereas if it is pure continuous integration you don't necessarily get that opportunity so you do see that with other projects where mm -hmm. they make a bit of a splash out there with you know oh here's this new release and check out all these new things that you get with it I, I agree with Martin. I think that's actually part of partially my motivation, right? We need to start making little splashes. And uh, even if the release is not significantly, you know, significant from a functional point of view, just getting that out there and saying release one is announced, then that kind of gives us something to shoot for. Yeah. So I think if we can agree on that we are having a release train and we do it like four times a year or whatever, uh, I, I think uh, we, we need some sort of a release manager role. And we talked about that earlier. And that, that's part of why, why uh, I brought in Susan into this. And, but um, if, if we, if we want to have a release manager, we could sort of, that could be a rotating role, of course. And, and we need to write up some processes around that. Like this is what's, what we're going to do when we, we, we are planning for a release. And this was the release is going to contain, and there has to be a splash as, as part of that. We, we're going to have to write up on, on the wiki somewhere that, hey, we are planning for this release. And by the way, here is where the features we, that we feel are in. And then once we release, we obviously have release notes and all this. Hmm. So, so the, the, this is Lewis with uh, LFN. How's everybody? Yep. Um, yeah, we, we have a release manager at LFN. I, some of you folks may have worked with him, David McBride. You may know the name. Yeah. So I can, 
Yeah, I can invite David to one of these calls, or we can set up a separate call, and he can he can walk you through uh, the process for release management. Um, if you'd like to do that, I'd be happy to arrange that or get David on a call with us. Um, yeah, I think that would be and, good because then then we can uh, you know uh, uh, use some of the experiences he has. Doesn't mean so, that we absolutely have to do it the same way everybody else is doing, but at least we get that as input, right? So yeah, that's right. That's right. Hello, everyone. And this is Mutu from EMI. Uh, I would suggest to go for your yeah, half yearly releases, like yearly twice, because uh, there are a lot of uh, people involving in every feature and uh, brainstorming things and uh, uh, approving things. It would be good if you can like uh, make a major releases by every uh, half yearly, something like that. This is just a suggestion from my side. I, I would, I would. Um... I think I would err on the side of more frequent than less, right? For a community of this size with this kind of code base, waiting half a year for a bunch of features to be officially announced, that's a little, seems a little, um, you know, seldom to me, right? We need to, we already have a pipeline of deliverables that we could potentially slate into these releases, and it doesn't have to be multiple new features it could just be incremental value as i said and if you look at the the intel plan if you look at the hp plan um if we look at you know what you guys are doing i think there's enough in there for four releases already but what it does is it gives us some stakes in the ground where we can say okay we need to finish development by this time or we need to you know move it to the next train or you know it kind of gives us more more meat in terms of planning and and as martin also pointed out it also gives us the ability to make four splashes a year yeah yeah i agree on that yeah that's a good point and also don't forget as we get into interoperability kind of work with cntt and uh, um, other organizations there will be additional things that we could claim in each release, but we, at least, you know, if we have something, right? So let's say we start with four and then say it's not sustainable, we'll have to go to three. Um, at least we would have, you know, started, you know, with a plan and, and could say there is a release plan now. We can adjust it, nothing is ever cast in stone, but at least we would have something. So Louise, uh, can you, can you, uh, sorry, I already forgot the, the, the guy's name, but the, the LF yeah. release manager, can you invite him for next week or? Yes, I can. W one of the thing I want, want the team to keep in mind is that uh, it's really important if we start utilizing uh, that resource in LFN that we, we take this project and bring and, 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 uh, and make the proposal that we bring it under the uh, technical advisory council for LFN. And this way, it becomes an official umbrella project. Yeah, that, that's um, a, that's a different topic, but but it's a good thing that you brought it up. I I think so. So can you can you uh, so that we should talk about that, but but perhaps we need to just address this quickly now, uh, uh, without uh, going off uh, too long in that direction, because we need to we need to tie up the release schedule. But uh, what happens if we have participants here? Louise, that are not LFN members, and we bring this project under LFN, is, is that going to be a problem? I don't believe it is. Uh, membership under LFN is by every, by every member is not required to become an LFN project. Um, so I think we're okay. I can just double check because I'm relatively still new for, with bringing new projects under the umbrella. But I, but I don't think that's an issue. I mean, because because anybody can can contribute, right? Yeah, but yeah. There, I, but there are this IPR, there are IPR rules, Luis, right? And there are other other governance rules once you become an official project. Uh, yeah. But uh, but that, I think if you can check that, Luis, because I I think we want to make that decision needs to happen here fairly soon, and I we we yes. But if you can get get back to us on that one, because we don't want to put people in a situation where they joined and they're working together with us and then we're going to have an issue that that's the only concern. Understood. I'll go ahead and escalate that uh, just to make sure that I get that correct. But um, 
Uh, yeah, that's no problem. Okay. I've got that. Awesome. And I'll also and talk you... to David. Yeah, okay. I'll talk to David, who's the release manager. Absolutely. David, and, sorry, and, I, I just want to get his last name as well. You said... Uh, oh, uh, McBride. David McBride. 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 Yeah. Okay. Very good. Uh, Thanks. Hi, hi, all. This is Piotr Zodlewski. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, uh, if I may, uh, uh, two comments uh, as... Um, uh, I basically second the idea of uh, quarterly based uh, uh, release train. Uh, we have uh, quite a lot of experience um, in some of the projects like DPDK and SPDK. Uh, this works pretty well and we can also, if needed, uh, invite uh, Paul Luce, the principal uh, engineer uh, from Intel who can um, uh, elaborate uh, on that. Uh, one thing to, to keep in mind uh, about um, uh, how to uh, establish this, this cadence, uh, uh, the, the suggestion would be that uh, uh, quarterly based release is uh, fine. It not necessarily needs to be aligned with the calendar quarters, uh, like um, releasing at the end of first quarter, uh, second quarter, etc. Uh, because, uh, for example, uh, at the end of December, there is a Christmas holiday season and we don't need to be uh, you know, uh, tied with the release schedule to, to release uh, something at the end of December. Uh, in the project, uh, in the other project that um, I work with at Intel, uh, SPDK, uh, we have uh, uh, like a release at the end of January. So we actually mark the releases uh, with a year, like 20, uh, to mark is a 2020 point. And then uh, 01, like end of January, then end of April, end of uh, uh, July, and end of October. So that's that would be my suggestion. Uh, so end, did you say end of January is is the first release? Then we could we could schedule that for this. That 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 would actually give us some breathing room, and and we would also be able, probably be able to, depending on what Rafael says, to lift in uh, some other contributions, right? For example, yeah, uh, unless we are, you know, tied with other projects that we, we depend on in uh, with uh, Odim, uh, but if uh, if there are no such dependencies, uh, that would uh, probably work uh, qu quite well. So the uh, the numbering uh, numbering scheme also would be twenty one point oh one to market. Yeah, yeah, that 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 makes a lot of sense to me, and if we can just today perhaps. Perhaps it's premature. I don't know. Uh, align on that we will have a release end of January. Then we could have a talk with David McBride. We could get input and we can firm up our release train process in the background and and give that like one or two weeks before we vote on that and and get it in. And we can still make a splash saying, "Hey, we're mm -hmm. going to release end of January." Any concerns with that? Or I mean, uh, I was just thinking out loud. So, so if we're going to do this, then what we're saying is that um, we're going to go quarterly from January, or we're going to make an out of band release in January because time is short now, and then the next one would be at the end of March, then at the end of June, then at the end of of September, that in the end of December. No. So what? Uh... I think Piotr was saying was suggesting was that we go end of January as the first release, and then okay, we and go end of July. Oh, sorry, end of April. April. Is it? Yeah. 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 Okay, that makes sense. This way, we avoid the holiday rush at the end of the uh, at the yeah, end of exactly. the release. Yes. No, I I agree with that. I think that's a good point. Yes. Do we need? To, should we vote on this one then to adopt that, or uh... we should. You know, in terms of yeah, participating. No, the only thing we really need, we, we need to get out on the our wiki and be able to say we're going to have a release end of January. Yeah. And then we can talk to David McBride and we can get our, our processes and ducks in a row, right? Right. I started a release kind of map page, but I couldn't put anything in there because we didn't really have a plan. Today, we seem to have at least a... a uh, a tangible plan, you know, now we just need to kind of start putting in, you know, release train kind of features into each one and we can move them around, but at least we can slate things into each one and kind of give everybody a sense of what's coming. So I'm, I'm going to, 
if if you're okay, I call. I, I will call for a vote just on the first release, then end of January, and then we 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 firm up the whole process and vote on that later. Okay. And if that's fine, I think we can just ask if anybody opposes uh, the first release end of January. And if we exclude anybody trying to get off youth, uh, we actually have agreement there, then, right? <laughs> we do, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we agreed to release, to have the first release, to have the first release end of January. And then uh, we will have David McBride, if he can make it next Wednesday, uh, and let us know, Louise, and then we can take it from there. I think with his input, we should be able to turn around and write up some processes. Yeah, I'll go ahead and uh, discuss that with David okay, and uh, see, cool. if, see if he's available. Very good. So a couple of other topics. Obviously, we, we were awesome at time boxing this, so we blew away 25 minutes. Uh, but that was a very important topic, though. So we have a few other topics. One that will go very quickly is the, the white paper feedback. Um, I'm just going to ask you guys if you need more time because we Martin has not received any feedback and and Martin do you just sort of quickly tell us what the white paper is about oh, is he still around yeah he's here it's yeah. basically about fabrics and DMTF uh fabric model and and I give it to you Martin just uh yeah that's that's exactly it really it's basically talking about the extensions to DMTF's fabric um schemas for Redfish fabric schemas to support Ethernet switching and how that was would be used as part of the Odom project. Um, and so the intention is to, you know, pass it off to um, telcos as well as networking vendors and um, uh, solicit a bit of interest from them in this in terms of integrating the um, you know the, the, the configuration or the lifecycle management of you know, compute and storage alongside Ethernet switching more, you know, more closely align those those things. Um, so that's what the paper's about. Yeah. So anybody, I, so the thing, what we want to do is next step is we want to take it to LF and LF will uh, put an, uh, a Linux Foundation template around it. And then we want to use uh, Odim uh, and 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 release it basically. So that's why it's important that you don't have any allergic reactions to it. And if 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 you guys need it, we can give you another week, no issues, right? But or did anybody already look at it and have something to discuss? I need. I I finally managed to open it yesterday, and I'm still kind of getting through it. So that's my my sad okay. state. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no worries. Uh, it's better that we we give some more time and and so we get some feedback, right? So let's just uh, bring it up again next week. Okay. I read it I think two months ago, but I don't recall uh, the details, and I haven't written down any details. Uh, the thing I do recall that I, I felt there was a mix of high and low that, that uh, um, maybe not, but, but I'll, I'll try to read it again and write what Thanks, Thomas. High and low as, as how you felt or high and low as regards to detail? No, as, as in uh, it was a high level description and then yeah. it dived down into extreme details. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. kind of high and low. Okay, so so let's we, we push it out a week and and because uh, we want to be able to release it from Odem and saying yeah this is a this is our uh, view of the world as far as the fabric model uh, and how that can be used right okay so that's fine um, done with that one uh, and and the other thing is we we wanted to bring up is the Dell plugin then right. Obviously, the background here is that we all want to see uh, other hardware vendors to come into Odem and help out and start contributing. Um, and and long term, we want to see. And we are working on on just just to give you some background as well. We're working on profiles as well. Our engineering team is is going to test them. We have a draft. We have draft profiles ready, 
and these profiles are then uh, basically mandating what properties should be present in in Odem if if you want to if you want to have a, a server or if you want to uh, do a plugin for that server uh, and those those properties are they what schema version do they need to comply with what are they read or writable or just readable and and these type of things and so Jonas this is Rafa I would like to be in the loop for the profile definition because we, I think we yeah. are doing the same things you know in yeah. parallel because yeah, for, yeah, the yeah. BMC, for the BMC simulator I need to you know come up with the profiler mandatory properties so exactly yeah. the same work yeah so I think that we would review these in the in the community Absolutely. meeting, right? Yeah. So it's just initial so, proposals that people are making. So. Yes, yeah, so I think what I will do is uh, first off, we need to figure out if it's going to be a separate uh, repository. If it's the same repository, we just we just create them and, and stick them in a feature branch, and then we can work them there. This is not HPE trying to push something. It's it's more like trying to get the work started so i totally agree alex once we look at them and we have viewpoints we can we can change them and we can make sure that we all are behind them right right but, but the way they're going to be used is i think in long term is if we can get uh, the dells the hpes the the quantas and others to to then start thinking about next generation interfaces on their on their bmcs um, and, and already there comply with these, th that will give us an opportunity to not have to have vendor specific plugins, right? Unless somebody wants to expose something that is uh, uh, specific for that vendor. We, we really can only use one type of plugin to manage all the vendors. So, so in that spirit, we obviously were hoping that we could get Dell and others to join the project. When that is not happening, there are some challenges uh, oh, First out, there are challenges with uh, with the industry and operators and other end customers uh, about uh, you know is this going to be something that is really adopted or is it just going to be uh, you know something where very few vendors will will have a presence. So so in 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 order to to make this more usable and also perhaps put some pressure on Dell to come in and join, I was thinking we could just develop a Dell plugin in the community uh, that could could get the work started that will allow us to to uh, at least as a proof of concept or something stand up where you can manage multi-vendor equipment with Odin. And so that's why we wanted to propose that. And, and I will write up uh, a, a TSC proposal for this, obviously. Uh, and it will be a, kind of a, a, a not very complicated proposal. And then we can vote about it. But I wanted to just bring it up here as a uh, food for thought. And if anybody has any allergic reaction, we should absolutely not be doing that. Or uh, if you have any type of viewpoints, feel free. I have no problem at all of, of doing that. I think it's a good, good exercise to be doing to expose the differences that exist in the market. Uh, I, I know it very well firsthand that there are big differences, and I think it's far too optimistic to believe that there will be one plugin. Just take something as simple as firmware upgrade, where everybody moves towards having their own hardware root or trust, having their own signed firmware that goes in and that has to go through the processes of that OEM or ODM company's signing process, which is different. So I would say forget about having one and only one plugin uh, as long as we don't get Redfish to be the strong authoritative forum about how to do all these things. So um, let me let me kind of make it maybe say it a different way. I mean, my 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 perspective. I think we need a set of Odin profiles that we can use then to test interoperability between different um, for different plugins that get created. I think the value of Odom is diminished greatly if we don't do that, uh, because then what's the point if we never arrive at a small enough number of one? I agree that there's some challenges in terms of how security is done, a firmware upgrades, but but there's also a spec in DMTF that deals with firmware upgrades, and so. I'm, I you know I'm puzzled. Then you know what is that spec for if no one is going to use it? Um, well. I think the it's, issue it's that, to the that, maturity level of it. I'm trying to speak. 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't. It doesn't, it doesn't deal with the firmware upgrade when it comes to the signing and where do you get the. Difference. Understood. Understood. And Thomas, what I'm basically saying is that there's the current state, and then there is the the desired sort of state, and and then. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then yeah. steps we take towards that desired state. I agree with you with your current assessment. Things are kind of nascent, but it doesn't have to stay that way. I, I, I agree with you. I'm, I'm trying just to get some sort of a realism into that. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, trying to, in a short while, get to one and only one plugin because it's red fishing it's all standard. Um, I think that that's slightly optimistic. That, that was yeah, 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 yeah. In the no, near no, no, term, no. I would agree, but in the long run, I think that's what we need to work but, towards. But there is a difference between having a view and a goal to work towards, and and while you're working towards that goal, you you actually accomplish a lot of things. Like you could potentially increase, um, you know, uh, interoperability, uh, even though you don't reach the goal with one single plugin, because there's mm -hmm. going to be. BIOS settings, it's going to be firmware updates where the vendors are, are very, very different and we might never get there. You might actually increase of interoperability so that you don't, you, you are at the state where you can say, hey, independently of what server vendor I, I pick, I know that these properties are with a high likelihood going to be there, right? And which is a good thing, I think. If you, if you can move in that direction, I think. I, I completely agree. And that's why I started with saying that I think it's a good goal. But uh, I, I've also seen that if you have that as a goal and you start expressing that as since this is a goal, we don't need to have differences. We only make one. We don't really need to have plugins because it's Redfish standard. Then you're getting sort of on the wrong track by a different reason. So that, that was yeah. what I was stating only. Good point. Yeah. So one, uh, one point of one data point, uh, we're scheduled to present to OCP on November 4th. At 4 p.m. Pacific time. Um, so it would be ideal to at least, you know, agree on a position statement so that when we do the presentation, uh, we're not just, you know, doing some general hand waving and whatnot. We don't have to show the profiles, but we should probably, you know, be more definitive about our intentions. Um. What are you looking for? Like, uh, I, I, I think I think we we should mention that we we will have profiles and they they will serve to to try well, to uh, move people into one direction, right? Right, but we kind of need to encompass a few things through those profiles. First, we need to kind of understand how they're going to get partitioned, right? Is it by device? Is it by by some other means. So we need to at least kind of maybe just say, hey, this is our thinking of how the interoperability is going to be achieved through Odin profiles. And, yeah, yeah. And then we, the, the other thing is there will be always going to have to be degrees of com complexity that somebody is willing to support. And so what's the base profile look like versus extensions that somebody may want to add, right? These are the sorts of things we need to maybe just sketch out. It doesn't have to be firm, but in fact, you know, it shouldn't be because we could ask OCP to work with us on this. But, yeah. but, but we the, need the, to say- The issue with OCP though is that they, they, some of their profiles are a little bit outdated as far as they're referring to some older- That's fine. That's, I'm not saying they're, they're perfect. All I'm saying is we're going to present to them and say, by the way, we're going to define a bunch of profiles that we're going to bring to you guys for prescription. And, and that's where we need to convince them that this has value and that, you know, we're not going to make this a separate thing. We want to make it, we want to be, we want it to be OCP blessed. They have their own profiles. So, so I know to trade carefully there. Yeah, exactly. Well, they're, they're, they're kind of a registry for profiles, right? For lack of a better, um, and, you know, we can figure out a way to work with them. Maybe it means that we work in the context of OCP on the profiles. It doesn't mean that we can't say that Odin will have community representation in these OCP meetings. I mean, that could be one proposal. Yeah, well, the, okay. the only profile that they have is a compute one, right? They don't have one yeah. for storage and they certainly okay, don't have enough. Yeah. They don't have anything for networking either, right? So there's only really one profile that OCP has. 
um, and it's a little bit, it's not exactly being worked on that much in OCP. It, it doesn't, it doesn't even contain uh, a direct attached storage, their compute profile. So they have the yeah. baseline and then they have the compute. So the only, the, what exists in ODIM that we're going to propose that we're going to work on is the baseline uh, compute with storage, direct attached storage, as well as networking, yeah. and then shared storage when we when we get that yeah. right. And I think that's a good approach because we could basically say we're not ignoring what you've done. We're going to embrace and extend it, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. and yeah, that's key. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's building. And and actually, you know, when Jonas started this, that's exactly what he did, right? He started with what OCP had, and he built on exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. So, right. uh, so we are scheduled to talk to them on November 4th, Janet, uh, Janet. so we just need to kind of coalesce something by that time. Yeah, That's so perhaps we need to set, uh, who's doing that presentation, you and me? Uh, yeah, uh, we're going to do it, yes. So then perhaps we, we just set up a meeting uh, so we can, uh, we can talk, one yeah. or two meetings, okay. But uh, can we close on the Dell plugin? Uh, I will write up a proposal for this and I would invite anybody to participate but first out we need to get the proposal through and and the, just so you know the angle here is not at all to to put Dell down in any way shape or form we should simply look at uh, compare perhaps to the profiles what is there and what is not there what is not there we can map in the plugin from perhaps some OEM place in Dell and map it in to to the proper uh, DMTF Redfish property that exists. And then we just simply work that way and document it and we raise issues. And then I think we're going to have a plugin that is going to be very usable for, mm. for, you know, for at least POC's type of approach. Yeah, right. Exactly. And we know from talking to telcos um, that this is exactly what they want. So, yeah. So this is also an opportunity to uh, to maybe again once again encourage the operators to join in because if they have specific requirements, Martin, or you know in terms of the granularity of what the profiles can accomplish and whatnot, we should probably um, invite industry opinion on what these should be. Yeah, definitely. Okay, good. So then uh, we we clear that and we still have 20 minutes wow so we what is uh you were left? concerned <laughs> yeah what what is left uh, is with two things we continue discussion and conclusion around the composition service i think that can that can uh, be something that can drag out I, and we will also have updates on intel's contribution rafael i don't know if you added that perhaps you want to take that on yeah the, the Raffle, are you there? Are you on, on yeah, there? I'm here. I'm here. I, let me share. Please let me know when you can see the screen. I can see. Okay, thanks. So uh, I will give you an update on the two contributions that Intel volunteered to contribute to the ODIM. The first is the actually uh, plugin for unmanaged rack, which is uh, which was voted to be implemented by the TSC. Uh, the, the slide here contains link the, to the wiki at the TSC uh, wiki. And the, the current stage is that the Intel implemented registrable unmanaged rack plugin with the support for all the operations related to the chassis endpoint, such as get chassis collection, get chassis, both manage and unmanage, uh, delete or unmanage chassis, create rack and rack group chassis, and the patch, patching of the rack chassis. On the left, we have the uh, three of the, let's say, source code that was added as of now. It's still on the feature branch. We, we let's say, wanted to work in an open spirit and so we are contributing as we as we develop it's uh, anyone on the tsc anyone actually can can look at a sneak peek into the source code it's on the branch unmanaged plugin rack issue 139 uh, uh, vi visible on the github uh, i would encourage the uh, let's say attendees here to review the changes and uh, let's say propose uh, the, the modifications as, as as you feel 
one of the things is that this is the first, uh, let's say, collaboration outside of the initial HPE, let's say, uh, resource aggregator. And I think we still need to get some process uh, maybe defined for how we all collaborate. Because we still have something to do on the Intel side, but, but we would like to get a, a feedback as early as possible. And we encourage everyone to give the feedback. We are in the process of, let's say, working with the engineers that initially contributed to the resource aggregator uh, to get their opinion. And I would appreciate some traction so, on so this one. Rafael, uh, the only thing there is, <clears throat> I guess, uh, I, I just looked at the branch and I hit your plugin. Uh, and I, if you wanted to build it, there is no readme file there. So how do we go about? Um, yeah, so so this is a good, this is something that we it was already signaled, and the readme file it will be delivered. Yeah, yeah, okay. So so on the next steps, actually, we need to add. It's still early days, so so yeah. We need to add the support for messaging, the readme file, some uh, actions like verification of the links, and do the final cleanup per the review process. So. Uh, Jonas, I would appreciate, you know, feedback from, from all the, the, let's say, technical steering committee members, but, you know, the, the, the initial developers who were uh, laying the ground rules for the audience would also be valuable, and we we waiting for any, any kind of feedback. We didn't receive any so far. Yeah, yeah, I see, I see, yeah. So let's, uh, let's see if we can get that in order. I know you had some meetings with, uh, with our engineering team, and, and yeah. I, I, I don't. If you know. encourage your engineering team to, to collaborate closer, it'd be great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this is ongoing. I think we we find we 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 got into the design of the of the resource aggregator. The plugin fits nicely, and once we are near the let's say development or near the completion of this task, and I I, I approximately. Uh, I'm giving a date of, let's say, end of November that it will be ready for final review and add stream to the main branch. Uh, we can do the, or even in the one of the sessions of the TSC, we can give the demo how it works. Brilliant. This is excellent. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there, there, there um, is a... Yeah. There is an awful lot of interest in this, um, you know, from our engineering team. Um, but I, 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 you know, the impression I got is that our guys were a little bit unsure as to how mature this is and when they could start kicking the tires for it, right? But you know, from what you're saying, it's pretty close. So they can. It's pretty stop. close. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Very and good. I mean, yep. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Goodness. No, I mean, for us, it's uh, it's a key feature. So it's something that we we need to start uh, using, and you know if there is some things missing or or some things that we we feel that should be done differently, that type of feedback we should we we need to get to you guys absolutely. Well, so uh, and and I think it's better if we do it. Uh, so but it brings us perhaps we do it on a mailing list or something so 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 it just it's in the open so we can get discussions from other parties as well coming perfect. in. perfect that'd yeah. be perfect okay cool yeah the second one the bmc simulator i'm collecting the requirements and this is actually in line with what what uh, hp is also doing right the, the profile stuff so the, the landscape looks like the, of course, the PMC simulator should be compliant with the OCP profiles the, for the server hard, server management, which is not enough. As you all know, the, the amount of the properties or actions that is uh, defined in OCP server hardware profile, it's minimalistic. And as we know, the nature of the Redfish itself is a data model, which is I would say 90% of properties and actions is not mandatory. It's not required. Therefore, we need some, uh, let's say, golden templates on, on the what server has to uh, implement to be compliant. So OCP is a starting point, but it's not good enough. I, I am in contact with the with Redfish Forum via our rep, which is John Leong. I'm not sure if John is on the meeting. Uh, John suggested okay. to... John suggested to use the open process automation standard. The, the OPAS forum is using Redfish as a standardization of the profile. They deliver the OPAS profile to the, to the Redfish. It's a little bit more, uh, let's say, 
descriptive than the, the OCP basic profiles. So we are looking at that. But what also, I, I keep in mind that uh, open BMC is something we want to be uh, interoperable with the Audi. And I, I hope that so, everyone agrees. Yeah, we do. I do. Uh, so I, if, if we could take, so this is just a wishful thinking, right? If I could take the BMC simulator and configure it to mimic different type of servers, uh, uh, servers, I would love for it to mimic a server that 100% comply with the ODIM profiles. And, and that, that can be then part of the CICD pipeline, obviously. But if I could also mimic a server that 100% complies with, with uh, some, some Dell server or HPE server, that will make it even more powerful and we can start doing interoperability tests and things, things of that nature, right? Uh, it, is, is that how, how do you do you have like configuration yes, files for yes, that yes, behaviors or oh. yes Jonas, we can probably probably there is not enough time today but we can yeah. schedule a, in the next TSC the walkthrough or you know the, the the design perspective but yes this the let's say simulator itself it is uh, it requires some conversion of the let's say sch retro schema integration into the source code but then it is highly configurable with respect to what should be uh, emulated, simulated, and what version of endpoints we are exposing. Okay. It, it, would, it would require creating different, it, it can create different simulators out of, out of the same tree by specifying you know, different like templates or different initialization functions. Yeah. But uh, so, one of the starting points that I have is like open PMCs are also important. And I think that Audium should work with the open PMC. And I did some comparison here on the right. You can see the, the end, uh, Redfish endpoints and then the open BMC versus Redfish. The Redfish here, it's compliant with the 20.2, which is the, used to be the latest scheme. I'm not sure if there's newer. Uh, new I have one, to check. Yeah. Dot three. But, yeah. but you, you see there is this mismatch with the, Endpoints, obviously, open BMC as a living uh, Mac, living you know source code, and I was part of RSD, so I know how painful it is. It's always a problem to catch the latest endpoints, right? In in version in all the endpoints implemented in the source code. Uh, I would seek your opinion. What should we be basing on? Because we will uh, the work that we started on the simulator, we are synced to the latest uh, Redfish schema, right? Well, this is a larger question, even because we have on the northbound side of Odem, how how t how close to top of release should we be to the MTF? Uh, that right, uh, and they release like three four times a year, right? Yeah, yeah, it's some, somewhere around four four releases. Yeah. Oh, it's so that would scary. actually, that's a good point to bring up. I mean, if uh, potentially if we can align to the spec releases, then we can also pick up changes if needed in, in services that we implement, right? Because then it's kind of, then it's more powerful even than, than before. Alex, I think it's a brilliant idea. The problem is we cannot just shift left to, let's say, uh, support, uh, let's say, the given new Redfish schema on, on the very day they release it, because you, of course, of course, they already need to process. Some yeah, so right. we stagger it, right? You know, we, yeah, we yeah. choose to, you know, at least we would give ourselves a chance to do it potentially. Yep. So uh, I, uh, w in one of the next meetings, I will probably bring you the, uh, the required properties and an endpoint, at least, you know, based on the OCP and the OPAS. Uh, open BNC for now is just an open question that we need to at some point ensure that, and this is real work on the on the Audium side, just to be sure for for now, the Audium is compliant with HPE pro, proliant uh, uh, servers, right? I'm not sure, and I'm pretty sure it's not working out of the box with OpenBMC because I, I think one of our engineers tried and there was some problems. He also sticked some uh, B simulator that was exposing multiple computer systems under, under computer system collection, and it also caused problems, right? And then, yeah, so, so, just to, so we, we need to know. work on, 
or interoperability, but also one, one thing you ask, it's not black and white. When you stick some BMC and the audio is not working with it, it's not simple uh, registered and exposed assets or, or failed and did not ex expose any assets between various systems, uh, microservices within Audium, some of them will expose some pieces of information. So I think this is something we all collectively need to work on to improve. Yeah, just, just to highlight, we did not design Odem to be compliant with HPE servers. Odem is compliant with Odem profiles and a lot, there is a lot of properties in there that sure. um, HPE servers do not comply with, and we map them in our ILO plugin. So ODIM should be neutral and align as much as possible with the MTF. And then the server vendors would either need to get a, a, a BMC interface that does that as well, or come up with a plugin that do, does the mapping. And that's what we have done. I agree, now, unfortunate right. wording on my side. I, what <laughs> yeah. I meant was ODIM initially was not validated with uh, serve like open BMC BMCs. No, yeah, yeah, correct. So there is some work we need to put into the array as well. Okay, the BMC simulator. I think I have I shown this slide before. So you know, profiles would be OCP OPAF, which is part of the OPAS. Uh, if there is any interesting work that uh, HP identified in terms of the supported profile so far, which will help to let's say to intercept uh, while doing the BMC simulator, I would appreciate any, you know, Jonas early ideas on what your, what is the approach to the, to the, let's say Odin profile. If it's not yeah, in line with be, what uh, I saw. OPAF is, I have to be a little bit embarrassed here and say OPAF is a new thing to me. What, what is, where, where are those po profiles published? Is that? Uh, they they published it, it through the uh, Redfish forum actually. And OPAF I think in, in the previous slide, and I will send the presentation after the meeting, there is a meeting, uh, there is oh, a yeah, yeah, yeah. link to the, uh, to the OPA, OPAS profile on the DMTF side. So it's- I didn't so realize it's, DMTF was releasing profiles. Okay, cool. So, so I talked to John Leonk in this scenario, it's like Redfish is open to publishing profiles that you know, any standardization bodies would like to publish. Uh, and and uh, as such, is used as a as a body that is signing, right? Uh, making public. That, does profiles. that mean that we could, Odin could potentially pr uh, publish profiles there as well, you think? Or? I would think so. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, I, I didn't know about this either. And I, I've been looking since, since you posted the, the link before. <laughs> Uh, through it, and it actually maps one to one to what I've been hearing from telcos, and to I want to see this type of events. I want to see this from the BMC, uh, and doing all this uh, Redfish uh, registration for the events and what they want to see in the platforms. It actually maps pretty well, so it's it's a good thing we're using that as a reference. Sure. Yeah, so so maybe it's a good point to to bring into the agenda for one of the next meetings. Uh, let's say discussion around you know submission of the Odin profiles to the Redfish forum, and for that I guess we need Jeff Hilland and Jeff uh, uh, and John Leung, idea. Yeah. Okay, next slide. Next, this is just the, just some uh, basic capabilities of the simulator that we will be delivering. It's REST server serving Redfish schema customized to mimic specific BMC as, as jo, uh, Jonas, uh, let's say, mentioned before. Configuration format is JSON. And the configuration of the initial simulator resources uh, happens via config file. Uh, you can bind specific address and port to the REST server of the BMC simulator. Uh, there can be the authentication configured, BMC user credentials. Uh, there is a possibility to add resources in collection and it will support expand and, and level parameters. Uh, what about the, the event service? Is that... So if, it's, it's on our list as well. Sorry, it, it's... It's not currently implemented, but it, yeah, it's yeah. on our list to be implemented event service. Okay, cool. And one can possibly override allowable values for action parameters. 
Uh, yes, so for the one of the next meetings, I will prepare the supported list of endpoints and parameters, and maybe it'd be ideal if I publish it on the wiki of the TSC along other, let's say, proposal for contribution to, to seek uh, TSC, let's say, committee uh, feedback, right, on what, yeah, what yeah. is supported, what should be added, and I'm basically good. done. Yeah, you didn't leave a lot of time, but that was very valuable. Thanks a lot for that. Yeah. Uh, definitely, we'll uh, we'll see if we can. Uh, so, do we need a new uh, mailing list, like a developer's mailing list? So we have TSC. We can't. I mean, if we are diving into things like uh, getting feedback on a certain contribution, TSC mailing list might be overwhelmed. Yeah, I agree. I can. I, I, can I, I, I think I can the initial initial plan was to create, you know, developer sub forum yeah. sub tasks. Yeah, I can I can take that action. If I can't make get it done, I'll I'll talk to Louise and, and see if possible. Uh, All right. Jonas, Jonas, I think we can resume the composition service related discussions in the one of the next stuff. Yeah. Meetings. Yeah, we have to. Sorry about that. Uh, it's just that we took so long time for that. The, the last couple of meetings, I, I was a little worried that that would consume the whole meeting. Yeah. Yep. I'll push it. All right, guys. I think we're out of time. Thank you very much this week. Before you just close, uh, the, the uh, Martin uh, white paper, just to ensure that we have the up-to-date version, where is that to be found? Uh, I think he, he stuck it on uh, the TSC mailing list. But Martin, do you mind putting it on the wiki? Uh, Under... Yeah. Well, we'll yeah I... on put it on just the wiki. Just to ensure and... I don't look at the old one. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And share it on uh, share it in the TSC where, where the link the link to it or something. That would be good. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thanks. Thanks. Bye bye. Thanks, bye everyone. everyone. Thank, Thank you all. Have a wonderful weekend. You too. Thank bye you. bye. bye.